Hi there, I'm Dr. Katie Van Valen and welcome back to Beef Minutes. This week I'm going to introduce you to a new series of videos that we're going to be doing through Beef Minutes over the next several months. So behind me here you'll see um, a calf crop of 2020 fall born heifers uh, that we've got here at the University of Kentucky Research and Education Center. And so we thought it would be a nice idea to spend some time throughout the rest of the summer and throughout the fall uh, talking about developing heifers uh, and really walk through uh, this group of heifers and talk about uh, the things that we're looking for uh, in our replacement heifers for our herd here at the research center as well as talking about some marketing opportunities for those heifers that maybe just didn't quite make the cut to, to come back into our cow herds. So behind me here is the entirety of our fall 2020 born heifers so we haven't uh, sold anything off of this group yet so you'll notice that there's quite a bit of variation in these heifers uh, both in size and quality uh, you can see quite a bit of variation in, in hair coat score and so for today's episode I'm going to kind of catch you all up and, and let you all know what we've done with these heifers to date uh, and where we're going in the future with them so these heifers of course were fall 2020 born calves that were weaned in early March uh, they were preconditioned, so we fed them uh, a commodity-based uh, supplement, and then uh, they have been out grazing on uh, some fescue-based pastures. Uh, half of them have been on a, a traditional endophyte-infected fescue that had uh, the ergoalkaloid uh, producing endophyte that can cause fescue toxicosis, and then half of them were on a uh, on pastures that had uh, fescue containing the novel endophyte. Uh, that doesn't produce ergoalkaloids. Uh, and so you might think that those out here with a little bit more of the retained winter hair coat were the ones on the, the traditional endophyte infected fescue pastures. But truth be told, uh, before we pulled them off of those uh, treatments, there were no differences in hair coat score. Uh, we had some that had shed out and that were slick uh, in both groups. And then we had some uh, that still had quite a bit of retained hair coat in both groups as well. While our heifers were on uh, the different uh, fescue-based pastures, those, those pastures had quite a bit of, of clover and some Johnson grass out there for them as well. Um, so that it wasn't just a, a monoculture of tall fescue that, that they had access to. And in fact, in some of their paddocks, uh, fescue was probably not even the dominant species of forage out there for them. Uh, again, they were being fed that whole time. Uh, so they were receiving um, a supplement of 1% of their body weight. Uh, daily and that was of a, a commodity blend that's about a 14% uh, crude protein uh, supplement for them uh, and then because we've kind of reached the summer lull where our cool season pastures have gone dormant because of the heat uh, we have pulled them off of there to rotationally graze this pasture behind us uh, that's got quite a bit of Johnson grass in it uh, and so they're going to continue to graze this pasture rotationally as one group uh, over the next uh, several weeks uh, as they work their way through here. Um, so that's kind of where they've been to date. They've all, they were all vaccinated at weaning, all dewormed at weaning, um, had the same fly control uh, put in them. So even though they were on those different pastures, they've been managed pretty much the same all the way through. So what we're gonna do with these heifers as they rotationally graze through here, eventually they're gonna end up very close to one of our working facilities. And so when they get up there, we're gonna go ahead and grab a check weight on them um, and check in and see where everyone's at uh, from a body weight standpoint. Uh, we're gonna to continue to feed them daily uh, while they're out here, um, because as you can see, uh, for fallborn calves, some of these heifers still have a ways to go uh, by the time we, we need them to be ready to be bred uh, later this fall. And so uh, we're gonna to continue uh, to feed them and give them access to high quality forages uh, until uh, we get into the fall and they're, and they're ready to enter, enter our breeding system. So that's been this week's episode of Beef Minutes. Tune back in. We're going to continue to follow these girls through and check in on them uh, throughout uh, the next several months until uh, we get them to breeding. So thank you for joining us and we'll catch you again next time.